Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Uh, thank you for subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing everything that you guys do. We really do appreciate. Please motivate me by giving me stuff to react to. Uh, just drop the name or the link down below and I'll check it out. So today I'm going to be reacting to Amin Did That Combat Kit Part 2 of 12. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. No. I am going to pick up the last phrase of that of the sire. Min humul mu'minuna wa akfaru humul fasikun. Among them, among the Jews and the Christians, there are good people and the majority of them are perverted transgressors. The good people, if you want to deal with them, in this booklet I have given you, just opened out the packet. The good people from among the Jews and the Christians, you can expound to them what the Bible says about Muhammad, read it, study it, share with them. You can expound to them, share with them Muhammad the natural successor to Christ. You can share and expound Muhammad the greatest. These are for the goodly people. The straightforward, sincere people. The mu'min among them. But Allah says, but the majority of them are perverted transgressors. For the majority of them, I have this one book here. Combat Kit. So we are going to specialize on this Fasik, perverted transgressors among the Jews and the Christians who are coming and knocking at our doors. Now, this book came about as a result of my visit to the Sudan, just around last year in June or so. I was in the Sudan. And after my lectures, every lecture is followed by questions and answers. At question time, a university student is posing the question. So, Mr. D. That, the Christians are coming from Britain, from America, into the Sudan. And they come and knock at our doors in Khartoum, in the capital. And we, probably all Arabs, the best words of welcome that in any language you can find, they say Ahlan wa Sahlan, family and plain. Just think you're a member of the family and be at ease. And they settle down and they pose the question. They are asking us questions. So you believe in the day of judgment? This is the latest now. You believe in the day of judgment? The Muslim says yes. You believe in the day of judgment. So after judgment is established, if you deserve heaven, you'll get it. If you deserve hell, you'll get it. You believe in that? He said, yes, yes, we believe in that. Now this heaven of yours, where will it be? Will it be here on this earth or in the skies? What does your Quran say? Whatever you say, on earth, he said, show me. If you say it will be in the skies, he said, show me. And he knows for a fact that the bulk of the Muslims, 99% of us, will not be able to. We, at the back of the mind, we have some ideas. This topic didn't worry us. Wallah, it didn't worry me. I said, look, where the heaven will be, whether it's in the skies or on earth, wherever, if I deserve heaven, I'll get it. If I deserve hell, I'll get it. That I believe. But it didn't bother me to find out where so now the, the, the person is asking me, Mr. D. Dad, what is the answer? What is the answer? I said, at the back of my mind, I have my prejudices, my preform ideas. But the guy wants to know, what does your Quran say? So when you say Quran says this, show me, and he knows you won't be able to show. Now this is his strategy of opening his Bible to you. You see, he gave you the first chance. Show me what your Quran says. You know, just teach me, expand to me. And he knows that you won't be able to do that. Then say, look, I will show you what my Bible says. Now you are duty bound. Out of courtesy, you are duty bound to listen to him. You are like a sitting duck now. See, because he gave you the first chance, you failed. So he said, now I'll show you what my Bible says. He's got you. So Mr. Dida, what's the answer? So I had to confess to my audience, and I confess to you even now, that I'm a born Muslim, I'll confess to the Christian missionary, so look, I'm a born Muslim, 75 years old. And in the eyes of the people, I'm a very knowledgeable fellow. In the eyes of the people, you know, who come to listen to me, they say, hey, Mr. Jidat must be an alim, an allama, without the title. See? 
he is a great lecturer, professor, they, they call me, at times they call me doctor, ustaz, uh, and all kinds of Molana. all these titles have been thrown at me. So, in the eyes of the people, I'm a knowledgeable fellow, and I don't know. I'm ashamed of myself. Having confessed, I said, now we must turn the tables. So, I said, I suggest to the guy, I said, look, I don't know my Quran as I ought to know, but I take it you know your Bible. And he's too arrogant to say no. He's got one under his arm. That's why he's there in your house. He wants to present the Bible to you, to expound the Bible to you. She said, of course. He says, can I have a look? Ready, ready, ready. He's, he's ready. That's what he wants. He wants you to accept his Bible. So he gives you the Bible. He said, when he gives me the Bible, I open the Bible. Genesis chapter 19, verse 30. And I give it back to him. I said, read. You read. He's going to glance at it. He's trained not to respond to your commands. You say, read. Not like this. I read Surah Fatiha. You say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alameen. Mm -hmm. That guy's too clever for that. When you say, read, he's going to glance. And when he glances, he smells a rat. He smells a rat there. He wants to change the subject. So I said, what? What's wrong? Isn't that the word of God? He said, yes. I said, I want to hear you read. And if he reads, what will he read? You open now your book, page 13, of Combat Kit, page 13. Page 13 of Combat Kit. Read it? Page 13. It tells you under 16, the heading is incest. Incest. Very strong word that. I don't know if you know the meaning of the word incest. You see, sexual relationship between two individuals who are not married is adultery. Zina. Which in the house of Islam is next to murder. Incest is worse than that. Sexual relationship between two persons are so closely related, like between father and daughter, like between son and his mother, like between father-in-law and daughter-in-law, like between brother and sister. Shh. It is the most despicable thing. It has become endemic in America. Fathers molesting their own daughters. Here, in the Eddington Hospital, in the researches they have done is that 8% of all white children who get molested are by their own fathers and the 4 year old and 5 year old and 14 year old 8% of all all child molestation cases that take place is between their own father not stepfathers and not relation but bone father 8% in America it has become endemic like an epidemic but now we have to deal with this topic because we want to turn the tables this is a kind of inoculation I'm giving you. This is not a pleasant topic to discuss, more especially with my sisters and my daughters here. It's not pleasant. Wallah, is not pleasant. But it has to be done. Somebody has to dirty his hand. Somebody has to dirty his mouth. It's not pleasant. I'd rather talk about the Quran, about this, that, 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 about this beautiful comparative religion, you know. It says, what is Taurat? What is Zabur? What is Injil? What is Furkan? Oh, beautiful. I, lo I love to talk that. But now, this is an inoculation I'm giving you. An inoculation? You going, if you are going overseas, you go for a vaccination and you go for cholera. Very painful. Cholera is very painful. I don't know if any of you have experienced it. You know, they give you a jab and it's quite painful. After a couple of days, you know, the thing gets swollen and you might develop even a fever. What is an inoculation? They love to hurt you. They cost you about three, three rounds or something. Or I don't know. <laughs> and they charge you many previously just to do it for nothing. Now they charge you three rounds and they give you an injection and give you a sore arm. Why? They want to introduce into your system an agent of a disease, cholera, that your body, in a little amount, minute amount, so that your body might get geared up into giving battle to that bacteria, that agent. 
And once it has overcome, because this is a minute quantity, your body has developed those fighting mechanisms inside that when actually the cholera germs invade your body, the body is already geared to do boxing to those germs and conquer it. That's, that's the secret of an inoculation, the purpose behind an inoculation. Now I'm giving an inoculation, it's also painful. But this is now to immunize you against a Christian missionary. So. Um, just in case some people are wondering what the first one was about, it was this is a class teaching Muslims, I guess, how to respond to maybe Christian missionaries somehow that are kind of preaching to them or harassing them, as he put it in the first part that I reacted to. Um, you know, I don't know, when it comes to preaching, people are really comfortable, they really want to spread the word of what they believe in. But aside from that, I'd love to focus on the good Muslims, good Christians, good Jews, good whatever it is that it is that exists out there. Be willing to talk to someone who wants to hear and be willing to hear um, from someone who's willing to uh, speak. As long as you have that common understanding, I feel like it's easier to have a conversation and not to irritate them or them to feel harassed in some type of way. And there are many issues at hand and how you can conduct yourself in such um, when you're approached by someone, despite their religion. And I guess that's what he's trying to do. But um, I guess that's what he's trying to do. So this was cut short. That, those are my thoughts for today, right now. And let me know what you guys actually think about his way of responding to people. You know, someone can be just can be chilling in their dorm, but there you come preaching. Are they interested? You have to read the room sometimes. If someone says they're in a hurry, give them their space. You don't have to chop them and force them to listen to you. Let's learn to respect each other and um, summarize whatever we have to speak about, I guess. If someone seems impatient or not willing to listen to you, I don't know what you guys think. What are your thoughts? Uh, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video.